Taking attendance like you <laughs> should? No, I'm not. <laughs> it just stared at me. Where should I? Where should I? Can you read it to the first? Heavenly Father, for another opportunity I'm getting together. Lord Jesus, just to seek you and to learn more of you. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you use Gilbert tonight. Father God, use him as a vessel to I'm going to do something different. I like to interact with you guys. I want you guys to be interactive with me. Okay. So, as the time of today's class, today's going to be a fiction. We're going to learn about fictional characters. Now, my question to you guys is my first question of everything. What comes to your head when you are asked what is a fictional character? Oh, and if I don't get no responses, I'm going to be wrong. What comes to your head when you are asked about what is a fictional character? Captain America. Fakeness. Everyone. Before we answer, I'm not talking about fictional characters like Goku, Naruto, SpongeBob, none of that. I'm talking about your character. Like uh, Jamani's character, her attitude, or Fake. Oh, or, uh, character. I thought fictional was not real though. I'm Let me simplify this. Okay. Character meaning like a, someone's trait. Okay. The character. So what do we think about? What do you think about when I when or what when you what comes to your head when you hear about fictional character? What comes to your head? Anything. It could be anything. Mm -hmm. Anything. A person who's trying to be someone they're not. They try to fit in. <coughs> I like it. Thank you. That's good. Shut up. All right. So what I did was I looked up. I looked up the word. I, I separated. So what I did was I looked up the word fiction on the dictionary. The dictionary tells me uh, it's an, an invented for the invented for the purposes of fiction. Of course, we all know what that means. Now I looked up the word character. And it says the mental and moral qualities dis distinctive to an individual. Individual. So basically, today we are going to learn about what is fictional characters. Basically, someone's straight. Basically, what characters? What makes you as a person? Um, we're going to learn about uh, what makes you as a person that's positive and what's negative. But this, while I was studying this whole lesson, I noticed that the Bible and, and everything that I was looking up was leading me to very, very, very deep uh, meanings to it. But we're only going to cover just skin deep, <laughs> just for the sake of time and all that. But can I get somebody to find 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 11 to 15, and please read it. Well, I'll read it. So it's going to what? 3, 11 to 15. Thank okay, you. ready? For no one can lay any foundation other than what is being laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, each builder's work will be plainly seen, for the day will make it clear, because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test what kind of work each has done. If what someone has built survives, he will receive a reward. If someone's work is burned, he will suffer loss. He himself will be saved, but only as through fire. Okay, good. We'll go back to that verse in a little bit. Describe what it means to have character. Karina, how would you describe that? <laughs> someone has a character would be someone who shows integrity. Someone who... Um, displays <laughs> kindness, someone who displays the love of Christ. Basically, you would say describing someone straight. So when I looked it up, to me, it means what, to me it means <clears throat> what defines you as a person, at least to some extent. Um,
अब अब हम एक के सुधरो पे लिख सकते Character is basically, because I want you guys to understand, character is basically the traits that make somebody. Basically, attitude. Basically, uh, <clears throat> the way you compose yourself. The way you are when you no one is seeing you. What you do behind closed doors defines you or what, who you are as a character. <clears throat> That's basically what what character at a, at a skin deep is. Um, now that we know a little bit about that, I want somebody to, to, to mention, somebody they know, that can describe the way they talk and act that displays a little bit of character. So we got an answer. So I know someone, not here, someone at my job. Yep, that's fine. That um, she is like, like her character is that her character is like not good of a character. Like she's rude. She um, she's just rude all around, and the way she talks, the way she acts, and so you can see that without even knowing her. So I think that. Shows her character. Yeah, that's that's recorded. Did you know anybody that can that that you yourself display that that you see that displays character? What name anybody that you see that can has some actions or talk a way where displays some character? I agree with that completely. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the way you talk and the way you, you see yourself for uh, this place character. No way. Okay. So in the middle of that, just like Ashton was saying, there's good character and there's always bad character. Who can identify? What kind of uh, traits? What kind of traits uh, are there to creating a bad character? To create a bad one. To create a bad one. Attitude. To create a bad character. Anger. Bad attitude. Bad attitude. Bad attitude anger. Resentimiento. From, I don't know how to say that in English. Bitterness. No. Bitterness. Bitterness. Oh my God! I love it. Envy. <laughs> That could be the well. You see, something we need to understand is the fact that just how there is good character, there is also bad character. Um, which is why as Christians, we need to always watch what we do, what, uh, what we say, and what we do behind closed doors. We should. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because as Christians, we need to understand that not only to others, you will show a bad character, which is one, not showing the love of God and not showing who Christ is. But not only will you show a bad character, you'll start creating an unholy one as well. Um, and having an unholy character, I started to look different things and stuff like that. And having an un unholy character is, how to put this, your mind, the way you act, the way you perceive yourself, it, it completely changes who, who you are. It's basically like if you're hiding yourself behind a mask, but that in itself is a completely whole different lesson, so we'll get to that another time. <coughs> okay, so now that we have, have identified what kind of, uh, what makes a bad character, now, can someone please tell me what creates, what traits create a Christian character? Giving. I saw her say giving. Loving. Giving. Loving. Obedience. Patience. 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 Surrendering character. Obedient. Obedience. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. The fruit of the Spirit. 
this, this table. The reading the word of God. Reading the word of God. Seeking him. Surrendering. Praying. Uh, <laughs> Alright. Can someone go to the word and find me Galatians 5 verse 22 and 23. When you're looking for Christian character traits, the Bible itself will completely tell you black and white. What do you need to have to have a Christian character? Galatians 5. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 and 23. You want to read it? Yes. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. And that in itself is basically what defines a Christian character. These character, yeah. character traits you as a Christian must have or must start creating yourself to be, to, to be, <coughs> to, for you to start following, to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Um, so now we're going to switch it a little bit. I want anybody to tell me, in your own words, what a foundation is. Describe it in your own words. What a foundation is. Friend. A base. A base. Okay. Something really good done. Or done really good. I'll accept that. I'll accept that. Okay. So basically, the question is, is describe in your own words what a foundation is. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah girl. girl. Oh my God. That's what it is. Oh. Base in Jamaica. Lo principio. Lo yes. que va a aguantar todo. Basically. Mama Lani. Urban Decay. Exactly. <laughs> foundation is basically. Exactly. A foundation is basically <laughs> what the, the base of what you're trying <laughs> to form on. <laughs> um, that's the construction people. <laughs> that's what I want to do. That's what you're doing. All right. La fundación. <laughs> so what I did was I went to the dictionary again, and in the dictionary it tells me an, an underlying basis or principle for something, which is basically See? what you guys mentioned, an underlying or base of what, what it is. I looked up another translation, and it's a translation that I really like. The translation, though, it, it describes for an actual foundation of a company of, of what it is. Um, but it basically says the action of establishing an institution or organization, which really called my uh, my attention because <coughs> um, because of what it says about being in action. So basically, I kind of rephrased it and I put the action of establishing a foundation on Jesus the Rock, which is what we're gonna get to right now. Okay. So, okay, so as Christians, as followers of Christ, as uh, believers in Jesus Christ, what actions will result in building our treasure in gold, our treasure with gold and precious stones? Let me rephrase that. So basically, as Christians, what actions, will, uh, what actions are we supposed to have to creating a strong foundation? Reading your word. In Jesus. <laughs> Reading your word. Surrender. Praying. Praying. Having the fruit of the Spirit, which kind of dumps it down. Prayer. Reading. We're making disciples. Not just reading, studying. Praying. Fasting. Having a relationship with Christ. Having a relationship with Christ, but that's your going way ahead of this room. What was that doing again? Question to you guys: What actions might we be busy, we be busy with, but but are not sin that will create an unstable foundation? So basically, what in our very lives? What do we do as a daily basis that basically takes our time away from God? That we basically put first before God. Facebook, school, Instagram, <coughs> boyfriend, <coughs> not just a relationship. relationship. What's a relationship? So basically, the TV, What's food, <laughs> the Game Boy. Que no sabe. Reaction. No, bro, I said. You know what I'm saying? Right, let me try to get it. 
que no son pecados, pero, pero te alejan de Dios. Trabajo, dinero, dinero, chocolate, amigos, amistades. You as a best friend will tell them, yo, you need to stay away from this person because he's no good for you. Oh, don't worry about it because I'm gonna change him. And the people are You can't change you. nobody. Nope. Mm. Nope. I felt that one in my soul. <laughs> <laughs> Write it down, quote me on it. You can't change nobody. Prophesy. <laughs> okay. So why am I putting all these together? Why am I putting characters with the foundation? Um, well, simple is because character is the foundation of your foundation in Christ. Your, your character, your demeanor, your traits are the starting steps to you uh, being a powerful follower of Christ. When you first accept Jesus to your heart, your change is not just from one day to another. God begins to change you little by little. So basically he begins to change your attitude. He begins to change your mind. He begins to change the way you think. He begins to change your heart. He begins to fill you up with forgiveness. He begins to fill you up for you to forgive others. He begins to fill you up with love. He begins to fill you up with patience. Um, he begins to fill you up with self-control. And little by little, <clears throat> God starts to change all these different character traits that you have as a person. And the, the thing about that is that as they, get, as, the, as they get changed for the better, you start to create a foundation that is founded in, in, in Jesus Christ. Because the way those traits change is by the work. As you start to get in your work, you will see how your characters will change because God's going to start beginning to change everything. God's going to start to begin to change everything to himself. And since character is the mental and moral qualities distinct to an individual, your way, like I said, your way of thinking changes. You will start to desire more of God. Your, you, because your love for him is, is going to start growing. As you, as it grows, and your desire grows, you start to look more of Him. You start praying, you start fasting, you start reading the Word, you start studying the Word because now you're getting into a deeper relationship with God and you want more and God is changing you to, to be a, uh, uh, an image of Him to others. As you increase your relationship with God, you create a foundation which is Jesus Christ, which is the rock that you stand on. So basically, your character traits, your, 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 what makes you as a person, God, when you, when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, God starts to change those little things. And those little things are what basically is going to make you, are what basically people are going to see that what makes you. And in those little changes, Changes, you start to create a foundation that is not about your job, that it's not about work, that it's not about money, that it's not about friendship. You start to create a, a, a foundation that is founded on Jesus Christ. And as you create that foundation, God's going to start giving you the desire to look more of Him. Amen. As you look more of Him and you start creating a relationship with Jesus Christ, you start strengthening the actual foundation that He has actually created, that you have created for yourself, that is Jesus the rock. Um, 
Now, what happens to us when we do not have the character and commitment to do what is right? What will happen to us when Jesus comes back? What happens when um, you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? What happens when you don't let Jesus to change these character traits? Because at the same time, there is a choice. So hold it from other time. Um, what happens when you don't let Jesus change you, change those things? What happens when you start creating a foundation that it's not Jesus Christ? Va a caminar ciego. Vas a caminar ciego. You'll start walking blind. Anyone else? Can you, can you say the question? Okay, so Things would distract you. Okay, so the question the question okay, so the question is pretty okay, let's, let's let's split the question up. Let's split the question up. The question is what happens when you what happens when we do not have the character and commitment to do what is right? What will happen to us when Jesus comes back? What happens when he comes back? Okay. When we don't do what is right. Then you won't, you'll stay behind. That is part of it. So basically you'll stay behind, but that is, that is somewhat part of it. Because you got to remember, okay, so let's say, <coughs> let's say you don't put God first on what you do, but you still serve him. Okay. And you still <coughs> and you still go to church and all that. Okay, so then you won't necessarily stay behind in the rapture then. Exactly. It just in heaven there's rewards that right. we talk about. Exactly. And so basically exactly. you'll be down here while everybody's got their rewards are all up here. Exactly. You hit it right in the middle. Not everybody. So that will lead me to Romans 2, 6 and Romans mm -hmm. chapter 2. I know you know, so right. you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Eternal life is. I don't need it. I don't need it. I'm not burning. I'm not burning. I can't find wrong with boy. This will take place on the day when God judges people's secrets through Jesus Christ, as my gospel declares. Mm. So, just like Rochelle was saying. When it comes to when it comes to a point where you just just like Rochelle was saying, um, as we don't put Jesus as our foundation, it does not necessarily mean that you are going to go to hell. Um, there are other traits and different things involved in that, but it it. It means that basically when you go to heaven, there will be no reward. There will be no no Excellent. no treasure. I don't know if you guys have heard in the Bible or, or have read the Bible that everybody's gonna receive a a crown. A, a crown. And in that crown you're gonna have different jewels and gems and stuff like that. So basically that's what it that's what it basically means. Um you know, we get you just won't get as much as what God wants. Exactly. You just won't get as much as what God wants for you. And so when we stand before God, we will just be judged for what we've done. We'll get judged for our secrets, our attitudes, our thoughts, and our motives. So basically when Jesus comes, um, everybody's heard of the great judgments. Right? So basically when we go up to, to heaven and we are judged, not only will he bring up everything we've done good, he'll also bring what is the bad. Not only will he bring up the bad that you've done from people, he will also bring up the bad that you have gotten in your mind, and all the bad that you have done behind those doors that you think that no one has actually seen or heard. Um, so, <clears throat> I want to do a small little exercise, a mental exercise. I want everyone to think about what's done in our lives. Think about all the bad stuff that we have done in secret that no one knows.
except here. Hmm. Now, think about how would you feel when you are in front of God and God brings it up to judge you. <coughs> how do you guys think you're going to feel? Yeah, how do you think you're going to feel? They should. But I mean, we know that now. But are we changing it? True. True. Mm. He's going to fire me. I think that's what, another reason why, as to the way that God can plan things and how no one knows when He's coming. Because if we know when He's coming, then we're going to make sure that that day before, all right, I'm going to get my life right. And that's not the point. It's not about getting your life right before he comes. It's about living it continuously and showing it some others you want to do. Exactly. Oh. <coughs> it's fire. <laughs> so you guys laugh and it's funny, but it's so true. It's, it's true. If you got the opportunity now, that we, we know what is good and what is bad, and we can stop doing it and wait for God, we will be re we were reward. 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 It's not about knowing what's good and knowing what to do with it. It's about actually doing it. If you don't actually do it, then basically, what is the point of you being here? Because if you, there, and I'm not saying that, 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 oh, you're going to stop from one day to another, or this and that, or pornography, or this and that, or whatever. It's a process. It's a process. A it's process a that you process. cannot give up. I'm sorry? A process that you cannot give up. A process that you cannot give up. And it won't be easy. Give up. Or you can't do on your own. You know, that you can do on your own. Which is why creating a foundation in Christ by reading the Word, by studying it, by doing what you need to do and creating sacrifices to make sure that God becomes the first thing in your life no matter what you do and no matter what comes in your way. That is the difference between that is the difference between being a follower of Christ or just a person that knows him. Um, to close out, I got three questions for you guys. I got my first question is, now that you guys know what it is to have a Christian character, can someone tell me what it, what it is? So basically, what is to have a what is it to have a Christian character? <coughs> what is to have, have a what? Christian what character. is it to have a Christian character? ¿Qué tú necesitas? ¿Qué qué es tener un carácter cristiano? cristiano? Woo, a lot of things. The fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit. <laughs> Name them. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. Okay. Ooh, Ooh. Put that fireball. I was wondering when you're gonna wake up. <laughs> oh, thank you, but I wouldn't woke up with your mind open. I can tell you the whole time. <laughs> okay. Don't sleep on me. Fantastic. So, Paola being a. So, okay, my second question would be 
What leads to having a Christian character? What leads? What leads to it? Like praying in the word, having a daily worship, not just at church. Perfect. Surrender. Surrender. Oh! Surrender to God everything. Then ask Him. They should not serve this Saturday. Surrender. I say see this Saturday. To help you, um, whatever you're struggling with, whatever you should you're going through, only can help you. God. Amen. You hit it right on the spot. Fasting. Going on. Surrendering. Basically, surrender. The foundation that is Jesus Christ. My last question to you will be: What does it mean to have a foundation that is Jesus Christ? Is it Mati? ¿Qué es lo que significa? ¿Qué significa tener una fundación que es Jesucristo? Yo diría que cuando venga la tormenta vamos a estar firmes. Es como los versos que ahorita leyeron, que todo, era romano, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Decía eso que cuando viene la tormenta, como quiera, no se pone, se pone firme. Y también Jesucristo había dicho una parábola que explicaba que el que... Es, ¿Iba a leer eso tú? No. Ah, pues sí. No, 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 okay. <coughs> Hay una palabra que explica que este Jesucristo comprando dos diferentes hombres, uno que fundó su casa sobre la arena y el otro que fundó su casa sobre la roca. La roca obviamente representa a Cristo. Entonces so, cuando viene la tormenta, cuando venga este la dificultad, como quiera uno permanece de pie. Y eso es lo importante de fundar el fundamento en Cristo Jesús. Someone look up Matthew 7, uh, uh, sí, verse 24, 25. Matthew 7. 7. 49? Ben, uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 and 25. And here we get to read it. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does them is like a wise man who built his house on rock. Then the rain fell, the flood came, and the winds beat against the house, but it did not collapse because it had been founded on rock. Amen. So basically everything that you need to say. As you have a foundation that is Jesus Christ, and you strengthen that foundation that that is Jesus Christ, that means that nothing comes your way to move you. That means as you put God first to everything, with your job, like I was saying before, your job, your car, your money, your riches, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your husband, your wife. That means that no matter what comes in your way, nothing will be able to move. That means if rain comes, if, if for example, usted todo está en casa. So, por ejemplo, si tú quieres tu trabajo, pero los dos han puesto su matrimonio en la roca que es Jesucristo, si tú pierdes tu trabajo y tú pierdes tu trabajo, tú vas a estar averiguando a ver como hombre de casa qué tú puedes hacer, cómo estar echado porque tú tienes tus hijos y tu esposa te sigue quedando. A lo que tú pones tu fe en Dios, a lo que tú pones Dios primero en frente de todo lo que, que ha puesto su matrimonio, que, que es en la roca, que es Jesucristo, nada de ustedes, uh, uh, el viento de la vida de ustedes, como no, aunque no tengas trabajo, aunque tú no tengas trabajo, aunque tú estés sí, sí. matando, te tratando de, 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 de figure out por qué, cómo tú puedes. Uh, take care of your, of your wife and your kids. So, Amen. meaning, so basically, that's the end of my lesson. I can't think of it. Amen. Amen.